Welcome to part five of Instafire. Our goal for this video is to be able to make a query to our backend called Firestore in order to retrieve the list of posts in our Instagram clone. We'll render our data in the UI in the next video, but for this video, our goal is simply to make a successful query. In order to make this interesting, I first wanna create some fake data using the Firebase console. So let's open up your browser and go to console.firebase.google.com and open up the project, which in our case is Instafire. Go into database. The first thing we'll do is create a database for our project. So you tap on this button and this will enable the Cloud Firestore database. You have the choice to set up Firestore in production mode or test mode. We're going to select test mode, which means that our data will be open by default to enable quick setup. This is less secure so if you do plan on shipping this app to the public, you wanna go back to production mode, but in order to enable quick development, we'll start in test mode. Tap on next, and you have to now set a cloud Firestore location. So typically I would recommend just you pick whatever is closest to you geographically. So in my case, it'll be US Central. And now cloud Firestore will be set up for you. Once your database is set up, you should land in this UI where you have the option to create data. So what we're looking at here is the Firestore root, which will consist of several different collections. And if you'll recall, we'll have two collections or two entities in our application, posts and users. So let's create the users collection first. We already have defined users from our authentication section. So if you go back here, you'll remember that we have two users already defined, Rahul at test.com and Nathan at test.com. We can't store attributes of the user inside of authentication. So we do need a collection in our database for each of these users. The association will be made through something called the user UID, which is a unique identifier for this user. So for my own test user, Rahul at test.com, I'm gonna copy the UID, now go into database, and we're gonna create the collection for all of our users now. So I'll say users, and then the document ID is going to be the same UID that we just copied from authentication. And here you can define the various fields or attributes on this user. There's gonna be two attributes. One is called username. And for me, this is going to be my name. And then one more will be age. And this is gonna be of type number. And my age, I can put 52. Now we're going to add one more document for the other user, which is Nathan. So I'm gonna copy the UID, go back into database and add that document. Similar to before, this user will have two attributes, a username, which will be of type string, which is Nathan, and then one more, which is age, and this is gonna be of type number, and the value we can put as 24. If you'd like to, you're welcome to create more users so you can play around with your app later on, but for now, I'm going to move on to the next collection, which is for posts. So let's create one more collection, which posts, and the document ID here will be something that we don't know. We're going to allow Firebase to create IDs for each post for us. So I'm gonna tap on auto ID, and here we need to define the different attributes that every post in our application, every Instagram post has. The one attribute will be a description, and this will be of type string, and then for this sample fake data, I'm going to put a value of my hipster look. Then we're going to add one more field and another attribute that every Instagram post will have is going to be a creation time. So this will be a creation time in milliseconds and this will be a number. And the value of this attribute will be the creation time in milliseconds of this post. So in order to put in a sensible value here, what you can do is just Google for current time in milliseconds and then you can just copy this Unix time here. The current time in milliseconds is easy to generate from Java or Kotlin, and this is important because we'll use it to figure out the relative time of how long ago each post was made. So we'll fill that in. Next, we'll provide an image URL, which is going to be of type string. The reason we're passing in an image URL as opposed to a full image is because there is no file type. So what we're going to do is use Firebase storage later on in order to upload a file, get an image URL, and pass that in here. For now, I'll leave this as empty string and we'll get to it later. Finally, the last attribute is going to be a field called user, which represents the owner or author of this post. This is going to be of type map, and this is where we're going to embed information about the user inside of the post. 
The reason we're doing this is because Firestore is an example of a NoSQL database. When we query for the list of posts in the main screen of our application, we'll want some information about the user who made that post, which is why we have to copy over information from the user's collection into the post collection. I'll copy over the details of my test user, username Rahul, age 52, into this post document and then save it. So we still need to come back here and update the image URL. The way we'll do that is by going into storage. Firebase storage is how we're going to store our images. You can store any kind of binary blob data here, images, audio, video. Let's tap on get started and we'll accept the default security rules here, which is that anyone can read from Firebase storage, but you can't write to it unless you're authenticated, which means that you're signed in. And that's fine for our purposes. Next, we have to choose data sharing settings and I'll just go with the defaults here, tap on finish. We have to set a location. Again, I'll go with the default, which is US central for me. And now we tap on the confirm button, which will set up Firebase storage. What we'll do here is we're going to create a new folder called images. And I like to just have all the media in different folders. So it's obvious where images belong, where videos belong, where audio files belong, in case your app grows to support those in the future. Inside of images, we're now going to upload a file and I'm going to upload this picture of me looking like a hipster. And now we can copy this link address. So I tap on the, on the row and it shows you a preview of the image that you just uploaded. And I, and I copied the link address with that link address, I go back into database and now we can use that to update the image URL. Let's create two more posts. So in total, we'll have three fake post documents, which we'll use to bootstrap our application. In order to do that, we first need to go into Firebase storage and upload two more photos. The first photo I'm going to upload is about the Golden Gate Bridge. I'll copy the link address, go back into Firestore, and then we'll use that for the basis of one post. And you'll notice here that the order of these attributes doesn't matter. This is just a key value pair. So previously we added the description first. And in this example, we're doing image URL first. We're copying over the creation time in milliseconds and the author of this post will make it be Nathan. So username Nathan, age 24. And we'll save that as a second post. We'll make one more post. This will be a picture of a panda. Copy the image URL, go back in the database and repeat the same process. We'll have the user who created this third post be my, my test user, Rahul, and then we will save this third post document. Now that we have this fake data, we can start to query it from our application. Let's go back into Android Studio. And similar to how we added the Gradle dependency for Firebase authentication, we need to do something similar for Firestore. So go into Tools, Firebase, and search for Firestore. Follow this guide for read and write documents with Firestore. We've already connected our app to Firebase, but now we need to add Firestore to our app. And this is what we'll add it to the build.gradle file. So we'll, we're pulling in that library into our project. And we can actually do something similar to what's described in the tutorial over here, except we're of course doing this in Kotlin. We're going to get a reference to firebase.firestore.getInstance. So I'm going to define this as a late init var. And the reason it's a late init var is because we're going to initialize this inside of onCreate. But once we initialize it, it should never be null, which is why we're not declaring this with a question mark here. Firestore DB is equal to Firebase firestore.getInstance. And at this point, Firestore DB is pointing to the root of our Firestore database. So it's pointing to the very beginning. We want to make a query for all posts. And so what we're going to do is define a variable called posts reference. And this will start at the Firestore root, which is Firestore DB. And we want to look inside of the collection called posts. There are two ways that Firebase allows us to query all the documents in a collection. The first way, if you scroll down to uh, section five of the tutorial, is you can call .get on the collection. And this will allow you to retrieve the entire collection. There's another way, which is 
more powerful actually, which is to add a snapshot listener. And what that will do is you're asking Firebase to inform you whenever there's any change in that collection. And that's what we're going to do. So we'll say post reference dot add snapshot listener. This gives us back two parameters in the asynchronous callback, one which is a snapshot and one which is the exception. So if the query succeeded, then the exception is going to be null and we're going to have data inside the snapshot. But if the query fails for whatever reason, then exception is going to be not null. So now that we have these two parameters, we can use these to actually get the data from the database. The first thing we'll check is if the exception is non-null or if the snapshot is null. In either of these cases, that means something has gone wrong and we should indicate that. Let's define the tag. And in this error case, we should return early because something has gone wrong. If that didn't happen, then we'd like to look inside the data that we got back. The way we can do this is by iterating over the result set. So I'll say for document in snapshot.documents, we'd like to just print out a log statement. All I'm doing here is printing out the ID of the document followed by the data of the document. The data is a field which will print out a map of all the attributes of that document. Let's try running this. So let's open up Logcat because there shouldn't be any UI indication of this. But we see the empty screen as we expect. And now if you open up Logcat and I'm going to filter for post activity, you can see that we do see the document ID followed by this data. So you have creation time milliseconds and image URL. And here's the data that we entered. So you have a description, which is Golden Gate Bridge, hipster look, and my favorite panda. And the user information is filled out as we expect. So this is proof that we're able to talk to our backend and get data back. So now we can delete this to do because we are able to actually retrieve data properly from Firestore. Our next step will be to translate the data we get back from Firestore into data classes or models that we can use to render in the UI. If you've gotten this far, leave a like to let me know and subscribe so you get notified when the next part comes out. See you then.